If you want, it's Emily Fox. Today's video is going to be the ultimate book recommendation video because I will be doing the book recommendation book tag. So I have 20 questions to find you the best book recommendations to answer those questions. Some of them were easier than others, but it's going to be fun. I have like a ton of books next to me. So let's get to it. Question number one, a book you tell people is your favorite. Okay, we're not off to a good start because I hate choosing favorite, which is kind of why I started doing my ultimate favorite book every year. For the last two years, I did this giant tournament bracket on the wall and try to figure out the number one best book that I read that year, which very torturous, but really interesting. So the one that won the first year is going to be the one that I'm choosing because I feel like this is the book that I've recommended the most or like that I've recommended the most on YouTube and people went ahead and read it because of me because basically nobody else was talking about it obviously big quotes because the book is like 30 year old. So I'm really, really happy about it. So I will keep recommending it nonstop. And it is I Who Have Never Known Men. It was originally written in French, which is why I reread it in French, but I read it in English first and went ahead, found a French copy. Absolutely adore it. Very, very short, about 200 pages. I would say this is like speculative fiction, which is not my usual cup of tea. I just found it randomly at a library uh, sale. And I mean, the title, the cover caught my eye. Read it, absolutely loved it. I feel like everyone knows the premise at this point, but 30 women underground in a cage, something happens one day, they're left with the door open, they escape, things happen. It's definitely more philosophical than what I usually go for, but in a really good way. You could have discussions. I feel like every time someone reads it in real life, because again, I've made so many people read this in real life, we just talk about what they think it means because there are just so many possibilities, but absolutely adored it. And like I said, I reread it and I never read books. So this was just fantastic. So I'm saying it's my favorite book, but I don't like choosing, but we're gonna go with that answer. Number two, a book that is your guilty pleasure. Okay, I feel like I don't really read that many books that could be considered guilty pleasure. And I feel like I don't feel guilty whatsoever, but I decided to go with some books that now that more and more people are reading it, more and more people are hating on it, and I just don't care. I still love them. <laughs> I'm thinking uh, The Seven Husbands of Ellen Hugo. At this point, I feel like there was a bunch of hype. I read it while it was, you know, going up because everyone was talking about it. I ended up really enjoying it, and now people are kind of just hating on it, and I understand the criticism. I agree with some of them, but overall I just enjoyed it, so I don't care. Uh, same thing with the Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. Again, when it started becoming a thing, I picked it up, really enjoyed the concept because someone reliving their day over and over while trying to solve a murder mystery, while switching bodies, like it's super complicated as a premise. But I agree that the ending was the weakest part, but again, I don't care, I really enjoyed it. The concept was really fun and different. Uh, also, A Little Life. Is this really guilty pleasure? I feel like we're just gonna go ahead. I'm switching the question. I always do that. But I feel like everyone hates this and I understand, but at the same time, everyone loves it. Me included. And yeah, shamelessly, I will be rereading this because one day I will be ready to have my heart broken all over again. But I personally really like this. I understand, but I like it. Another one that does this count a little bit too? Because I feel like the main male character absolutely annoys me because he's the, just shamelessly like a self-insert from the author. I don't remember how old he is. I would want to say 40 year old men and like he just sleeps with every female character. But at the same time, the book comes off as like kind of feminist, especially for the time. So like it, it's shamelessly, I don't care. I enjoyed it anyway. But I feel like the real answer, okay, if we're being honest, this is what people want to hear here. And like, I did give this book two star compared to all the other ones that I mentioned, I gave them five. But at the same time, I read it because of the hype. I was in a reading slump and it just helped me to get out of it because it's so readable. And like, at first I've locked it. At first you can just see me being like, what is wrong with everyone? Because why would you like this? And then you can see me start laughing and laughing and laughing towards the end because it's so bad that it's good. It's it's self-aware. So I feel like this would probably be the real answer of like a guilty pleasure, but like it is a series. I've been mentioning that I would continue it if I were in a reading slump again, and I am in a reading slump, so maybe I should pick up the second book because it's so bad that like, but it's readable. Sometimes that's what you need in a reading slump. So yeah, I guess that's the real answer, but... <laughs> Number three, a book everyone loved, but you didn't. I feel like this is my brand. 
I don't want it to be, but I feel like it is my brand because I'm always hitting, no, that's not true. I'm always trying really popular books because I think it's a really great way to find new favorites and that's usually what happens. But then once in a while, uh, unfortunately, some sometimes it's just, they're not good and I don't care, I will say it, they're not good. And I feel like this one is really relevant right now. Dude, look, I even bought this really pretty edition because I was so sure I was going to love it. So sure. I even kept it for when I was recovering from jaw surgery. Like, I feel like this is a sign. When you're keeping it for like a special time, I would have time to just devour it, enjoy it. And my gosh, this was awful. It was so boring. I've read a lot of classic sci-fi. I know the writing can be dry and yeah, it, it just, it's tedious. Not much happens. It's boring. I hate it so much about it. And the movies are coming out, so I feel like everyone is now thinking about reading it, and I've been getting more and more comments on my Goodreads review, which, to be fair, I wrote it randomly just for myself. That's what I usually do. Like, I know people will see them, but, like, they're usually for me, so I write a little something funny, and um, it ended up, I think it's the number one review, and I gave it one star, so obviously you can guess the comment section. <laughs> But like uh, the writing, like I said, tedious. The characters just annoy me. I I started it and I thought it was really progressive because like in this world, a sci-fi world, women are the one with those superpowers, magic powers. And I was like, ooh, wow, really progressive for the time. But no, no, you have Paul with his magical eggplant that is the one, the strongest one, of course. And it just obviously annoyed me. <laughs> you get more and more and just, no, no, I hated it. Okay. I'm we have to be okay with people admitting that a really popular book was not for them. And ever since I said that, a lot of you actually told me you also couldn't stand it. So it makes us all feel better. But yeah, this is... I will continue to hate on that book for absolutely ever. I don't care. Um, some of the ones that when I first started BookTube uh, were really popular and I hated them. I feel like it's so much harder when you're starting because you don't necessarily have a ton of people supporting you and agreeing with you, so it's harder to just say, I hated this. And Fangirl, I feel like, is a really good example. It was in my first, like, most disappointing slash worst books of, I think it was 2016. Like, I, it took a lot of courage to say that, no, I did enjoy her family. You're following this girl, she goes to university, she has anxiety, looks, so, like, you know, representation. And, yeah, I, I liked her family, but I hate the romance. That is no, no. Um, so yeah, this was a no. Another big one was The Gunslinger. <laughs> I still hate that book. I tried to continue, not really. I feel like I did it kind of in bad faith. I put it down really quickly, but like I had to declutter the series, so I wanted to give it a shot. But yes, I read the whole thing, the first book. It was the unedited version. Apparently, it who cares? I hated it. I understood absolutely nothing, and like I'm not that. <laughs> The author did come out to say it sucked, so like, don't come for me. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I will never finish that series. Number four, um, the book you read the fastest. Okay, I decided to tweak it to make it a little bit more interesting, and I have read plenty of books in one day, so I wanted to take a big book that I read really quickly, even though it was big book, and I stuck to the most recent one because, again, relevant recommendation. Listen, I just started raving about this. This is the first book that I finished this year, and it was the first book I gave five star to. And I think at this point still, you know, three months in, two and a half months in, it is still the best book that I've read this year. So, you know, worth the hype. Uh, the Will of the Many, new, new-ish release, absolutely worth the hype. Absolutely worth the hype. Trying to describe this, <laughs> It's so complicated. So I've been jokingly saying that it's like a pyramid scheme. It's like an MLM, okay? <laughs> That's the magic system. You can't take that. <laughs> I will keep saying that because I think it's funny. Um, but yes, it was great. It's a thick book. It's a fantasy book. It is going to be, unfortunately, either a trilogy or a quartet. So don't binge read it right now if you don't want to have to wait. But 600 pages and I was in a slump still in a slope, and I read it really quickly, so you can't put it down. It was great. Number five, a book that deserved more hype. I love talking about those, and I'm gonna go with my best book of last year, which was Blood Over Bright Haven. I don't have my copy because I let my sister borrow it. She, she better read that and love it, because this is an adult fantasy standalone 
and it's it's great if you are just a beginner for fantasy i think this is not a bad way to start because it's pretty self-contained like the world building sounds interesting but you don't get a ton about it uh, the magic system you definitely explore through the book through the character so i feel like it's again beginner friendly and um it starts really intense right away like the first chapter you're following the remnant of this tribe they're trying to make a run for it and like it's really intense you're emotionally invested and then it switched to another point of view and that's when the story starts and eventually, you know, things converge. And I loved it. I loved it. Also something you could binge read so quickly. It was so good. So good. And I think at this point, I checked this morning and it has like 3.5k ratings on Goodreads. This is so low. So low. It is self-published, so like you might not be able to find it at your library or anything, but it is so worth it. Again, I don't say often that you need to read this book, but you need to read this book. Whether fantasy is your thing or not, it might become your thing because so good, so underrated. Number six, a book that is becoming a movie or TV show. Can we have a talk about this? Because I feel like so many times, uh, so often, a book is like picked up and nothing happens. <laughs> nothing happens and like you try to keep up with it but like you can't keep up with it I feel like the seventh husband of Evelyn Hugo was supposed to become a movie is it still becoming a movie I don't know I don't know that one that would be one another one that I think would be interesting I had heard that it was becoming a movie or a TV show I haven't heard anything in a while now but the sparrow I feel like th this would be kind of traumatizing but I feel like I would be really curious to hear people talk about this again because I read it a couple years ago and then you know, I haven't heard that much more since, and this is good. I've been calling this the A Little Life of Sci-Fi, so be prepared, that means trauma. And you're following this group of Jesuit? Like, it's a religious organization that sends their spaceship to explore this planet because sounds were heard from Earth, and obviously they have the funds <laughs> to organize quickly and send a team there to, you know, preach the word. And, um... <laughs> Things just don't go as planned. And it was really interesting. I, I, yes, I did read a second book. Not necessarily worth it, but I want to see this as a movie. Would be traumatizing, but I want to see it. It's very character driven. I feel like I'm making it sound like it's going to be really intense, but it's character driven. Number seven, a book that you reread the most. Okay, I don't reread books. That's not true. I grew up rereading books nonstop because I didn't have access to that many books. But Ever since booktube, I think I've only reread three books, one of them being I Who Have Never Known Then. And I feel like this is my answer still because I think that throughout my life I will be rereading re this book every couple of years. Because again, I read it for the first time December of 2000, was it 22? And then I read it again in April 2023. So like really quickly, and I still want to. Like I will want to all the time because you get just such... I don't know. I've been calling it like beautifully bleak as a book because it's sad, but not really. I feel like it just makes you think. And I feel like my whole life I will benefit from rereading that book. So that's my answer. Number eight, a book from a genre that you don't typically read. Okay. I am naming two, but they're from the same author. So, you know, Emily Henry. I love her. I have read four of the books now, and these are by far my favorites. And she has a new one coming out in April. So I will be picking that up. But these two. I read during the same year, so I feel like they count as one in my head. You have Book Lovers and then Beach Read, and both of them are romance, which I don't read a ton of, but I feel like she has made me realize that I can like romance whenever you have older, more mature characters. And like, obviously you have a little bit of miscommunication, but it's not the big thing. It's not like the whole book. And they're like more emotionally mature. I need that. I need that if I want to enjoy romance. And what I also liked is that in both cases, the book is not just a romance. So yes, they are like enemies to lovers, but in this one you have like family, like her sister is going to have her third child, so they're having like a trip. And in this one, there's also a big part of it that is team of grief. So like it's, they're good. They're good. So Emily Henry, romance. The other two were not as good, but these two, favorites. Number nine, a book that deserves all the hype it gets. I was trying to figure out the most hype book ever and <laughs> I don't know if this is really the most hype book but the Starlight Archive series by Brandy Sandy. Um, I've only read the first two books because I'm trying to not rush through them. I know book five is coming out this year but you know it's going to be a 10 book series so like I'm trying to go through them slowly and they're like a thousand <laughs> so I'm also scared of them but having read the first two books I can already tell you that this series is absolutely worth the hype I feel like he's just a fantastic author he has improved a ton especially with his characters and love it I the world building the magic system I cannot even explain to you what 
what that's about, <laughs> what it is about. Like, it's just, it's a lot. It's a lot. And it's absolutely worth the thousand pages times ten that it will be. So, worth the hype. Not necessarily the most beginner friendly. I've heard people being like, oh, it's the first fantasy I've ever read. I'm like, wow. Um, that's, that's a lot. You can start with him, but I always tend to recommend, like, Warbreaker because it's available for free as a PDF on his website. So, like, very beginner friendly, very accessible, no matter where you are in the world. I know books are not necessarily available in English everywhere, but he's worth it, I think, so far. <laughs> Number 10, a book you usually recommend when asked to give a recommendation. I'm gonna go with I have number nine. <laughs> no, seriously, I usually ask people questions. Like, you have to give me a little bit more of information. Like, what do you usually like to watch this movie or book genres? What I love to do a lot is to try and make people read sci fi because for some reason, people don't wanna read sci fi. Why? I love sci fi. I've done a lot of like beginner friendly kind of videos. So like if you usually read like historical fiction, try this one. If you, you know, I love doing those. I will link down below in the description box some of them because again, I want to make people read sci-fi. So we're going to do that because otherwise I could spend the whole video doing that. And like I said, I've done that before. I feel like this video is going to be super long already. <laughs> okay, number 11, a book that has your favorite characters. Okay, I'm going to be honest. I feel like I do tend to be that person that doesn't necessarily get super attached to characters, but then it's because when I do get emotionally invested, I really do, but then I forget as soon as the book is done. <laughs> I feel like I love being emotionally invested, but like I forget about the characters. I am I the only one? Like I know some people have like literal like fandoms, drawing the characters, like, oh, do a thing that way. I don't, I don't, I don't. So, um, so instead, I'm gonna tweak the question and say the last time I was really emotionally invested in a character, and we're gonna go with this one. This is the Goblin Emperor, which is, again, a standalone fantasy. We need more of those. There are more books, but they're companion novels, so it counts as a standalone. So in this case, you found this character, uh, he met his father once, and he was just pushed aside, and unfortunately, his dad and all his brothers are dead in mysterious circumstances. And he's forced to become the emperor and you're just following him day to day, trying to survive all the political intrigue. And I was really attached to the character, which is why when I tried to read the companion novel, I was just, I didn't care. But I really cared about this one. I wanted him to succeed, so that was good. Number 12, a book you wish you could live in. <laughs> if you've been following my videos, you might know. I don't read a ton of books I mean, I started reading cozy books, which is gonna be my answer, but um, I usually read really dark books. I don't wanna live in a post-apocalyptic book, but I feel like this is a really good answer. This is Garden Spells, and this is a cozy fantasy. It is part of duology, you can totally read it as a standalone, and I've been calling this Practical Magic 2.0. If you've seen the movie, this is basically the book, but better, because I've read the actual book. This one is better. You follow these sisters. Uh, they live in a small town. They're witches, family of witches, and y you get really similar teams, again, as the movie. So if I could live in a book, I wouldn't mind being a witch in a small town. So, Garden Spells, it's good. I feel like we're going towards summer, too. Summer fall vibes, for sure. Number 13, a book you thought you would hate, but ended up loving. I don't try that that often, sometimes for the giggles, um, but one that surprised me because I had very little hope for the Reese book club, Reese's book club. I had read a couple. I have noticed since that when I went through the list that the ones I did enjoy, I didn't know were part of the book club and the ones that I picked up because of the book club, I ended up hating. So <laughs> that, that's the problem. But this one I picked up because of the book club, ended up really enjoying. Uh, wrong place, wrong time. I was laughing the whole time, not because it's funny, but because I was shocked that I was surprisingly enjoying it. You follow this woman who, um, yeah, now that I'm going to explain the, <laughs> the topic, I sound insane. I wasn't laughing at the actual book, but you have this woman, uh, her son is 18 and she's seeing him walk towards home, you know, at midnight or something. Yeah, after midnight. And uh, she sees him someone. It makes no sense because he's a good boy, uh, you know, good grades, shy, funny, blah, blah. Like, a good person. So, very confused, but she starts going back in time. She keeps waking up back and back and back and she's trying to wonder, like, what's gonna happen. I love time loops or whatever you want to call that. I love that. 
love that. So that's why I decided, you know what, I'm gonna give it a shot anyway, and I ended up really, really enjoying it. Look at the post-its. I would call this, like, a good mom recommendation. Obviously, I'm not a mom, but, like, I feel like moms would like this. There were a few, like, mom jokes. I'm saying that because one of the next books are gonna be, like, a dad book recommendation. So a good mom recommendation. I really enjoyed this. I was pleasantly surprised, so it, it counts. Um, number 14, a book that made you cry. Okay, not often do I actually cry again. A little life, I struggle. <laughs> Because, oh my god, the last hundred pages were painful. I mean, the whole book is painful. But the last one that made me want to cry is the Green Bomb Saga. Technically, it's more like book two and three because I read this a couple years ago, but then last year I read book two and three. And this series, like Fonda Lee, you are a mean, mean person. Um, I, again, extremely emotionally invested. More in the characters than the story. So maybe I should have said that as my answer. But the matches system is really interesting. You have this group of people, they're from an island, and they're basically the only people, not everyone, but some people that can carry Jade. And Jade uh, activates the magical power. There are a bunch of rules. And you have these two people, the two, like, gang, I guess, that are fighting for control for the city. And you're following this one family, and again, emotionally invested. You're following them through their lives, and ugh! Painful. Painful. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I was definitely... Little misty eyes throughout the book. Okay, I don't cry super often. I say that knowing full well that I did do a vlog where I was reading your saddest book recommendation and one of the books didn't make me cry, but whatever. <laughs> Number 15, a book you wish you could read for the first time. Listen, I'm gonna be honest. I feel like I do have a good memory. Like if you ask me, like point out any of the books that I've read pretty much on this channel, at this point, I've probably read over like 800. And I can tell you a little bit about each book, like 99% of the time. But give me a few years, and I feel like I've forgotten enough to actually <laughs> read books without really knowing what's gonna happen. I feel like that's the perfect balance, okay? I'm gonna be honest, I feel like I'm really happy about this. I need to do video, actually. See, that's gonna be the compromise here. I, got, I have no answer. Um, I will do a video about books that I want to reread. So I, it's on my list. I'm gonna do that ASAP because give me a couple of years. <laughs> I know some people literally after they finished the book they forgot and sometimes it happens to me I need to reread like the summary and I'm like oh, okay yes but <laughs> give me a few years number 16 a book that could cure a reading slump well I sure would need that right now <laughs> I did do a video actually about reading slumps again remind me if I forget I'm gonna put that in the comment section or description box and listen Ice Planet of Barbarian help me once. I think I'm gonna do that in April. I'm gonna do, because that's one of my answers, is to read really popular books that tend to be just readable. Like, they might not be favorites, they might, but they're just really readable, and just doing that helps. Um, I've seen a couple books, I'll put two on the screen that I'm thinking about. Should I? Should I? Or like, I planted their brains too. <laughs> I think it was like Divine Rival and like there's another one that I've seen. They're really popular and I've heard that they're really readable. So whether I like them or not, that could just be fun to just go through them. So that's my answer. Very readable books because otherwise what I've been trying to do and failing with is to read books that I think I'm going to give five star to and when you don't give them five star, I feel like it makes things so much worse because you thought you were going to love them and you don't and I've been trying to do that all year and I keep hating everything. That's not true. Once in a while, I find one I do like, but, like, not enough to just fix this. Anyway, number 17, a book you think everyone needs to read. Well, uh, maybe all the books that I've been mentioning that were the best books of the last two years. So, I, who have never known men, and Blood of a Bright Haven. That's my answer. I I'm moving on. Um, <laughs> number 18, a book you think would make an amazing movie. I feel like I suck at thinking about this, but... I was mentioning a dad recommendation. Again, not a dad, but I. every time someone asks me for a recommendation for a man in their lives, this is usually what I recommend, which is reasonably tears. And this is just an action movie, okay? It reads like an action movie. Again, extremely emotionally invested in these really gray characters. You have these two dads. Uh, their sons were in a relationship and they didn't really approve and uh, actually really didn't approve. And they were murder. So they, the police did their thing. <laughs> the thing and failed to really do much so they decide to take it into their own hands kind of team up together and unlikely unlikely allies i guess and try to figure out what happened and a lot of you know beating up people it, it's very intense action driven again would make a really good movie but 
I loved it. I loved it. Did not think I would enjoy these characters so much because again, see, I feel like it doesn't happen super often, but when I am emotionally invested, it makes a really, really good book. So yeah. Number 19, a book you wish everyone would give a shot, even if it's out of their comfort zone. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna name something else because I, I'm getting tired of myself. So we were talking about sci-fi and I feel like Becky Chambers is just an easy way for people that read more cozy books or want something positive. I feel like every time I mention sci-fi, people are like, yeah, but it's always depressing. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> Which not everyone feels like that, so fair enough. So she is a great answer. So if you're someone that already reads like fantasy and is able to push through complicated words and names and stuff, I would recommend A Long Way to Small Angry Planet because you have this team of like aliens and humans working together in a spaceship and it's great. I really enjoyed it. I giggled a couple times and I just, you know, it was good. And um, otherwise, if you don't want all the complicated words and names, I would recommend this series, the Monk and Robot duology. You have a Psalm for the Wild Belt, which is book one, and then a prayer for the, the Crown Shy. You have this monk that goes on a quest to figure out meaning for their lives, and they make an unlikely friendship with a robot. Super quick, cozy, love this, recommend this. Personally, my favorite is the non-cozy, <laughs> the positive one. <laughs> of course, uh, to be taught if fortunate, which you're following this group of astronauts that are sent on a different sol solar system trying to explore different moons and planets to try and find signs of life and short, not so positive. <laughs> Otherwise, if you don't want hard sci-fi, you want something a little bit easier, I tend to recommend The Humans by Matt Hag. You're following an alien that is sent into the body of a human that discovered a math equation that aliens don't think we're ready for. It's basically punishment for him. And he's trying to figure out what it is to be human. At first, like in a silly way, it's funny and then becomes more philosophical. And again, you get really invested in the story and I really liked it. This is definitely something I want to reread. So it's sci-fi, but like very beginner friendly sci-fi. Number 20, a book you'll never forget. We've already established. It's a question of time before I do. <laughs> Listen, I think this is a really good thing, okay? I, I appreciate that quality. But instead, I'm going to tweak the question, and I'm going to go with the Mistborn series by Brenda Sanderson. But specifically, this was the first series slash book that I read by him, and not so you the best way to start. I disagree with everyone saying that it is. Again, Warbreaker instead. But what I will never forget is when you get to the last book and you see the Sanderson avalanche, whatever people call it, you see every piece falling into place and you realize that everything was really thought through. Like everything makes sense. They all exist for a reason. And I remember just sitting there having my mind completely blown and I was like, wow, okay, I need more books like this. I feel like I like silly fun books too, but like when I want my mind blown, I know that Sanderson's endings. They're just, they're just there. So is adult fantasy stuff? Yeah, for sure. But yeah, that just left a mark. Do I remember most of it? At this point, no, but that's a good thing. Give me a few more years. I'll be able to enjoy it again. That's it. 20 question, 20 book recommendation. Let's be real. It was a lot more than that, but it's okay. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video fun little book recommendations. Let me in the comment section your answers to these questions if there are any books that you think you want everyone to read, especially the ones that you annoyingly would answer 50 times, like I did. And yeah, that's it. Thumbs up, subscribe. I'll put some of the videos I've mentioned on the screen. We recommend you check those out, like beginner-friendly sci-fi, because again, it is my mission apparently on here to make everyone read them. And I will see you in an upcoming video very soon. Bye.